Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between a dynamic array versus a dynamically allocated array. So a dynamic array is basically an array that resizes once the capacity is full. So an example of this is the vector in C++, or in Java, we have the array list, or the list in Python. And in many programming languages, it's basically any collection of elements that is enclosed in square brackets. So basically, there are three things that make up a vector. We have a size, which is an integer, and this is initialized to zero. Then we have a capacity, and for this, let's just say four, and then we have an array. So let's call this data, and this is going to be all the elements in a vector. So this array is allocated on the heap. Therefore, it is a dynamically allocated array. So to allocate memory on the heap, we would do new int, and we would pass in capacity. So what do these numbers mean? So capacity refers to how many elements the array can hold. So in this case, we have an array that can hold four elements, and this is created on the heap, and we have a size of zero. So size refers to how many elements we currently have in our array, and currently our array is empty. So this is what we have so far, and now let's talk about a dynamic array. What makes a vector a dynamic array? So a vector is a dynamic array because it can resize the array. And you might notice here that I put the word resize in quotation marks, and that is when we say resizing, we are actually not saying that we are adding more memory to this array. Instead, we are creating a new array with double the capacity, and then we copy all the elements from the old array to this new array, and then we destroy the previous array. So here, let me show you how that works. So I'm going to prompt the user to enter a number of items that we want to add in our array. And so here I'm going to prompt the user with a message, num of elements to add. And then let's see in num of items. And then here I'm going to use a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i less than num of items, i plus plus, see out, enter a value, and then see in data size. So we are putting every new value at the end of our array. So this is basically what happens when you do vector.pushback. And the reason why we put size as the index value is because index starts at zero. So if we had an array of let's say one, five, 10. So this array has a capacity of five. It can hold five elements, but the size is three. So index starts at zero. So this is zero, one, two, and three. So the size is always going to be the first available index within our array. And of course, every time you add a new element, you need to update the size value. So here we are going to increment the size. Now let's print this array. So let's print out this data. So I'm going to do for int i is equal to zero. i is less than, not capacity in this case, but size and i plus plus. And in this case, I'm just going to do see out data of i, and then see out n line. And don't forget, because we are allocating memory on the heap, we need to clean up the memory after we are done with the program. So here, we need to do delete with square brackets because this is an array, and we are going to pass in data. And after we free the memory, we don't want this pointer to point to a memory address that we no longer have any need for. So we are going to assign data to no pointer. All right, so now let's save and run the program. And I'm going to try to add four elements. So let's say 11, 12, 13, 14. And you can see we have four elements in our array. So after we've added four elements in our array, we have an issue, and that is, if I want to add one more element, we won't have enough space, we won't have enough capacity to add the fifth element. So this is where the resizing comes in. So right before we add a new value to our array, we are going to make a check. If size is equal to capacity, this means that our array is full. So what do we need to do? We need to create another array that is bigger. So here I'm going to print out a message, capacity full doubling capacity from, 
And here I'm going to print out the value for a capacity. And then here, let's double the capacity. So I'm going to do a capacity times equal to. And then let's print out capacity. Oh, did I spell this wrong here? Yes, I did. This should be an A. All right, so back to here. See how its capacity is now capacity. Okay, so here we double the capacity. Now we need to create another array. So I'm going to create another array on the heap. So we are going to call it new data is equal to new int capacity. Now what do we do next? We need to copy over all the elements from the previous array into the new array. And I'm going to do this with a for loop. So for int j is equal to zero. So be careful when we have i here and j here, it can be very confusing. So make sure you type in j for this for loop. So j is less than size j plus plus. And then we are going to do new data of j is equal to data of i. Okay, so within this for loop, we are going to copy all the elements from data onto new data. Now we have two arrays with the exact same values. So I don't need the old data anymore. So I'm going to free that memory. And then what I'm going to do is assign data to new data. So basically data is going to point to this new array. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when I declare an array here, it's only going to be within the local scope of this for loop. Whereas this pointer data is outside this for loop. So we can access this anywhere within this main function. Therefore, I need to be able to access this new array. So I'm going to assign this to data. And because we have two pointers pointing to the array, I no longer need this new data pointer. So I'm just going to set new data to no pointer. So just as a quick recap, anytime we add another element to our array, we need to check to see if we have enough space. If not, we double the capacity, create a new array, copy over each element, free up the memory of the old array, assign the new array to the data pointer, and then get rid of this temporary pointer that we created in this if condition. So this is the idea of a dynamic array, and this is what a vector does when it needs to resize its array. So let's save and run the program. So remember, capacity starts at four. So here I want to add 10 elements. So let's do 10, 20, 30, 40. And you can see capacity is full. Now we're doubling the capacity from four to eight. And now let's add four more elements. So let's say 50, 60, 70, 80. And now you can see the capacity is full again. And now we're doubling the capacity from eight to 16. And then let's put in two more elements. So 90 and 100. Uh, what happened here? And I think what happened here was, oh, I caught the error. And as I mentioned before, it is very easy to mistake in J for I. So here we have an I here. Let's change this to a J. Okay, so let's do this again. So let's save and run the program. All right, so number of elements, let's add 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40. And you can see we're doubling from four to eight, 50, 60, 70. And once we add our eighth element, our capacity is full. So we're doubling again from eight to 16 and then 90, 100. Okay, so we have 10 values in our array and the capacity is 16. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you understand the differences between a dynamic array versus a dynamically allocated array. So remember, a vector is a dynamic array because it resizes the array every time we need to add more elements to it. And a vector uses a dynamically allocated array to store its data. All right, so hopefully you understand the differences between the two concepts. And hopefully you now have a better understanding of dynamic memory allocation. So that is allocating memory on the heap. So this is just an intro on how the vector works. And in a much later video, after we've covered object oriented programming, we are going to cover data structures and algorithms in C++. And when we cover data structures and algorithms, we are going to implement the entire vector class from scratch. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. 
If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.